in my freshman year of high school with some of my friends that, well, one of my friends, he knew how to play. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I got interested in it because he used to beat people with terrible all the time. And I said, well, I don't think you're that good. Hello, welcome to Cricket Courage. This is the podcast where we tell people stories. In particular, we tell people stories on the South Side and in Hyde Park. And today with us, we have on our podcast, Jeffrey Campbell. Jeffrey Campbell is someone, if you live in Hyde Park, that is on 53rd Street, right outside of our church, playing often chess in the summer. You could say playing or you could say beating people badly. Anyway, it is so good to have Jeffrey with us today. We're going to ask him some questions and you get to know this mysterious man, you know a little bit more about him. So I wanted to ask you my first question. Jeffrey, first of all, Jeffrey, thanks for being on our podcast. It's good to have you with us today. Thank a you. lot of light shining in your face. Thank um, you. But my first question is, where did you learn to play chess? Well, I started off uh, around the, in my freshman year of high school with some of my friends that, well, one of my friends, he knew how to play. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I got interested in it because he used to beat people with terrible all the time. And I said, well, I don't think you're that good. I found out that he was that good. And so he showed me how to do the moves and stuff so forth, and, and he won for about a year. And then I finally got that chance where I was looking forward to winning, <laughs> and I, ever since then I had it in my blood of playing chess. So it took you a year to beat him, but you, kept, you, you, know, you remained steadfast. Oh, absolutely. So, uh, Jeffrey, you have helped to begin teaching me how to play chess. Um, and I'm still much a neophyte. I can beat my son, but <laughs> other than that, I think I won't take this show on the road. Um, what is your strategy for winning chess? I'm curious, as someone that's new to the game. Well, I, I start off uh, forming a defensive strategy first, in the, in meaning that uh, I, I protect my king surrounded by all the powerful pieces of the board, mm -hmm. making sure no one can get close to the king. That's the objective of the game is to get the king. So I surround him with a lot of powerful guys on the other board. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. In my beginning attempts now, I've been playing a little bit without you. I think the queen is pretty powerful too. I know the game is over with the king, but I think that queen can really do some damage on the board. The queen is powerful, but the queen has one uh, disadvantage. It, it doesn't move like a knight can, which is the knight moves in a sh uh, shape of an L. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, yeah. And if the queen get caught in that shape of an L, you can say bye to the queen very quickly. Yeah, yeah, that's a good point. So do you ever kind of compare chess to life? Or is it just a game and it's just a good game of strategy? It is a form of life as well as a form in the game. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Because, you know, you have pawns, which is basically considered as what uh, life is. Uh, People, individual people's on the on the street, so forth, mm -hmm. and pawns are uh, formed to protect the king, which is the president. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so you could form, you could look at it as a form of life as well. Okay, okay. So where did you grow up, Jeffrey? Um, I assume you grew up in Chicago, but where did you grow up? Where were you born, and where did you grow up in your formative years? Well, I grew up in Chicago, uh, Cook County. Mm -hmm. And uh, I lived in the projects on 4101 40, South Federal. Okay, Robert Taylor? Robert Taylor. Okay. And I went to uh, uh, what, kindergarten. Connor? Okay. Say kindergarten that again. and first grade there. Okay. Mm -hmm. 
And then I we moved on the south side on, on 85th and Sangamon. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And I went to uh, from uh, grade school at Gresham Grade School on the 83rd in Peoria. And from from grade school, I went to Simeon uh, Vocational High School, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. where I played basketball, football, and ran track. And that's my high school time. And I played chess in high school as well. Wow. Well, you are a little tall, so did you have game? I mean, were you good? Did you sit on the sidelines? It's okay. Some people can uh, sit. Uh, or were you in the game some? Well, I put it in, in the next way. I was the captain of the team. Oh, okay. So you got a little bit of bragging rights here going on. <laughs> <laughs> oh, gosh. Uh, I was more of a, a leader of the team than a father of the team. A leader, a leader. Um, that brings me to my next question. What's um, a proud moment in your life? Um, something you're proud of. Um, I imagine that there was some pride in being the captain of the basketball team, but is there another moment in your life that you were proud of? Uh, graduating, I was uh, very proud of graduating and uh, going to our college mm -hmm. because my, it wasn't too many members of my family attended college. Mm -hmm. So it, it was happy for the happy moment for the family as well as for myself. So I was very proud of that. So you graduated from Simeon and you went to school. And so where, you know, what was your major? My major was uh, political science, hmm. and my second major was physical education. So are you taking stock uh, of what is happening in America, the news, the political scheme, or uh, not so much so? Well, it's, it's a battle out there, I'll put it that way. Mm -hmm. um, you, you have the thing that's going in. Uh, with the presidency, with the presidency, and so forth, and this coronavirus, mm -hmm. it's uh, a, a deadly, a deadly virus, mm -hmm. and, and the president is a deadly, deadly president. <laughs> so, that, that in all is, is a combination for things not good. Yeah, yeah, you know. Um, I first met you when I started my job here and I would come out and you always had a smile on your face. And I wanted to ask, how did you keep that smile on your face? You were just, you always seemed so positive and full of hope. Well, that's, that's what uh, I got from playing basketball. Uh, when, when my teammates feel like we couldn't do the job, I always gave them hope and, mm -hmm. and and the spirit to win, to, to win victory over our opponents. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And so I, that carried with me through my life. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And I, was, I appreciate how, how my coach, because I was not really uh, astute to basketball, but he had took time out with me, step by step, showing me that how to appreciate the value of mm -hmm. leadership. Mm -hmm and not to be a, not to be a follower. And that, yeah. and that, that helped a lot. Yeah. I talk about, you know, what a difference you've made when I step outside my office and always kind of having that smile and having that hope. But I think that you not only give hope to me, but you give hope to other people. So a lot of times when I walk out my office, you're engaged with other people up until a year ago. And it seems like you made friends with a lot of people on 53rd Street. Um, would you agree with that? Uh, absolutely. I was, uh, they, my nickname is the Chess Master. And I, I don't know why people say that, but uh, I, I took pride, pride in that too. So, and, uh, and I took time off to put kids that would come back wanting to learn how to play at the time I put them, mm -hmm. as well as teaching adults. Mm -hmm. so I enjoy doing that. That's good. That's good. Well, I, I feel like, you know, 
53rd Street is not the same kind of without you. Um, what have you been doing in the last year for people that may be like, where's Jeffrey? By the last year and two or three months, I've been at a nursing facility, a, a Sydney area and located in uh, Hillside. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And I was, I ended up there because I had a, uh, an incident where I had got jumped on mm -hmm. and ended up with three uh, fresher ribs. And it was during the winter time. And at that time, I didn't have a really extra place to live at. And the uh, Chicago University suggested, would I be in interested in going to a nursing home? And I went and I was, um, and I was uh, grateful that they took the time to, mm -hmm. that they took the time out to help me through that process uh, in great need. Um, how was that time for you of getting attacked in the streets and getting hurt badly? Well, how was that for you? Uh, it, it didn't affect me. You know, it affected me in a way that, uh, that I was not able to move around mm -hmm. like I normally would, and, and it was hard for me to breathe. But uh, my spirit was always still lifted up, and and that that's what you know. Trusting and believing in the Lord it was one of the things that carried me through all that. Mm -hmm. And so my spirit was uh, really high strong. So. That's good to hear. That is good to hear. Your light shines. Um, so what would you want to tell people just about homelessness in Chicago? Do you think there's stereotypes around homelessness? What would you want to say to, to, to our community about, you know, homeless people? Uh, homeless is... It's not something that we were being homeless. It wasn't something that I had wanted to do. Right, right. You weren't like, hey, I gotta check this out. <laughs> you know, it's but um, it can it can happen uh, right before you know it, and it's it's a growing circumstance that that comes in your life. But uh, I would suggest that for those that are homeless, just just keep. Keep believing in yourself, mm -hmm. and it's going to get better. And for those that are not aware of homeless, just take the time out just to love your brothers and sisters. Mm -hmm. No, no matter what they're going, I mean, no matter what their circumstances is, because we are all brothers and sisters. We are all brothers and sisters. That is like so good, so good. For people that are listening or may want to do something or be generous. Um, is there anything at this present moment that you feel like you need or are in want of, or do you feel like you're just, you know, pretty straight? Uh, I, I just would like to, uh, pe if people that I do know uh, that I haven't seen, and I just like to let them know that I'm okay, and I miss them. And I'll be back around in Hyde Park again playing chess. So when it gets a little bit warm, they were out here this summer, Jeffrey. Even with their mask on, it was a lot of people. It, like since you left, there there are a lot of people. <laughs> <laughs> so it is so good. I I feel like you're a wonderful miracle story. But you were shining even when things weren't going well. Um, so you know we so appreciate you kind of being here with us today. Uh, generally, I ask this at the closing, uh, uh, just a funny question of, do you have anything on your bucket list, you know, to do before you, you know, go up to the pearly gates? Is there anything you'd like to do in this life? Uh, just keep, keep, spread, keep spreading the joy of life. Mm -hmm. And that's one bucket list that I will continue to do each and every day I'm here. I think that's a great thing that you can do in life.
before leaving to another life. Just keep going. Just keep going, keep going. And um, I know a little that you enjoy music. What kind of music do you like listening to? Uh, oldies and goodies. Oldies and goodies. Um, <laughs> Uh, do that people say what well, that might be well that's they like the temptations uh, the OJs uh, Earth Wind and Fire mm -hmm. and you know, Marvin Gaye those those guys are my music inspiration for me. And if you could have dinner with someone dead or alive, uh, who would that be? Uh, my mother. Mm -hmm. Any words you want to say about your mother? She was all that, a bag of chips. She used to tell me one time, she told me, she said, and, and I asked her, I said, why do uh, people always uh, want to make you out of something that you're not? Mm -hmm. And she said, she said to me, uh, don't, don't worry about, don't worry about what they say. As long as that you feel good inside of yourself, and everything will be all right for you. Mm -hmm. So don't worry about that. Just be the person that you meant to be. That is very grounding. Keeping your eyes and your path straight. Well, Jeffrey, we want to thank you for being on the show. Is there any last words you want to share, anything, or a question I didn't ask you, or anything you want to share with the community? Uh, I think we pretty much covered the... The, the gamut. <laughs> pretty much covered everything. And, uh, but I just want to wish everybody Happy New Year's and, and Happy Related Christmas. Thank you again for being on the show. God bless you, and I am praying that this journey you're on continues to get better and better. Thank you. Thank you.